Hi, and welcome to Sam's Dream Themes tutorial on how to composite somebody with this baby polar bear. Uh, I took this background a couple of years ago, and it's definitely one of my best sellers and one of my favorites. Um, it was the first snow of the season um, where I live in Canada, and it just radiated wow. And uh, I thought this polar bear is really cute to add to it. So the first thing we're going to do um, for the composite is we're going to add somebody. So I'm going to go to File. Oh, I'm not on Photoshop. Let's try this. File, Place Linked, and I've got this little guy selected. I have already cut him out from the background previously, and I do have a tutorial on that. So if you... um. If you're not familiar with cutout techniques, there's a few, um, then please go and find out, find my uh, tutorial on cutting. And uh, once it's cut and set to go, then yes, I do file place linked, and then I hit the enter key. And he's good to go. And I can start thinking about resizing him here. So something, if I put him here, maybe I want him in a minute. No, I kind of like the size. I like him being a little bit bigger than the polar bear, but not much. But if I do this, um, his legs are in front and the polar bear is behind. I want them to kind of be together to have a relationship together in the photo. So something I could do is I could hit um, Command-T on a Mac, Control-T on a PC, and then I could hit Control or right-click, and I could flip horizontal. This works, I think, um, if you don't have like a distinct hairstyle like this, but his hair is always parted on the other side, so that just doesn't really look like him, and I want it to look like him. So I'm going to go backwards there. I could put him over here, but then I'm kind of getting, like I like a symmetrical design, but that's um, getting a little far into the bush here. So I've got one more thing that I'm going to try, and you might have to try these things with your own composite, depending on what kind of pose you get. I'm going to bring him back over here. I'm going to place his hands, so he probably place his legs close to where the polar bear's legs are. Maybe make them a bit smaller. I'll tilt him so that He's a little bit straighter. I want him kind of on level with the polar bear. And I want him nice and close. And I love how he's on a bit of an angle right here, leaning into the bear. So it gives that sense, you know, that the bear's um, important to him, kind of like a little brother or something, little sister, I don't know. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit enter. And then what I'm going to do is I want him to actually be tucked behind the bear or beside it and tucked in with it a little bit. So I'm going to um, change the opacity right here of him. And I'm going to put a layer adjustment mask on. This lets me erase or add things back on without destroying um, the main image. And I'm going to go in with a black brush. Black will erase 100% opacity, 100% flow. Nice soft brush right here, and I'm going to start erasing his leg there. And actually, I'm going to bring the opacity back up now and see where I'm at. Ah, oh, so I'm going to start erasing in this area. And now the polar bear is kind of on his foot. And I'm okay with that. I could move him back further um, or make him smaller and change that around, but I'm okay with that. But you can see I've got these halos here. I'm going to change this to a white brush right here. And now I'm going to go in nice and close.
and I'm going to paint that boot back into those areas. And then just make sure here that I'm happy with that space. And I'm going to do that kind of bumpy right there to make sure that I get some of the texture back. And there we go. And the final thing, if I were really feeling picky, I'm going to um, apply this layer mask. So I'm going to go hover over this white box right here. Control or right click. Actually, I need to do it over the gray. First, I need to rasterize the layer. And then I'm going to go back to this white box. And I'm going to apply the layer mask. And something I can do is I can use the smudge tool. Ah, smudge tool and I've loaded it up with a hairbrush. You can get hairbrushes. Um, I think this one's from DeviantArt. Let's see where I hit it. Hairbrush. So inside of here you can just look them up and then you can load them up. To load a brush you go here, um, import brushes and then you find where they are. So in this case, there's my hairbrush open. And I'm gonna pick a nice simple one. I like this one right here. And I can just go and make this small. And if I do this with my Wacom, which is what I normally do, it comes out a lot softer than this because I'm using my finger, um, on a mouse pad right now. It's not coming out so soft. Like you can see the difference of the ones I got here with the Wacom. So if you don't have a Wacom and you really want to do this sort of thing, um, I suggest you get one. I think I got mine for less than $80 on Amazon and it's pretty awesome. But that's going to give you that texture back that you're looking for um, if it got lost. And I will leave that for the second. It'll be fine um, for the purposes of this example. So there we've go we go. We have these two right here. There's like a physical interaction. He's leaning in. It looks really cute. I'm happy with that. So the next thing I want to do is when I look at this little guy, um, I took his picture outside on my driveway, and it was the summer. Um, and it was pretty shady, but you can see that there were some kind of bright spots that got picked up on his face and stuff. I don't mind those at all. I think they work well with the rest of the contrast of this, but he is a little bit yellow for me. Um, I find that the winter kind of um, draws out your skin tone and he's just a little bit yellow for me. So what I'm gonna do is with this layer selected of the little boy, I'm going to um, choose an adjustment layer and I'm going to go first to hue and saturation. And I'm going to make sure I lock it down. So now that means I'm only working on the layer of him and not the whole thing. I'm going to choose yellows. And I'm going to bring the saturation down just a little bit. I don't want to wash him out. I just want him to look, there he is full. And I mean, I could make him gray, which is horrible. I just want to bring that yellow down a little bit and I can turn this on and off here to see what that looks like. And then I'm going to go to the reds because I do see some like a lot of red in his ear and on his cheeks and I just want to bring that down the tiniest bit. And then I can turn this on and off. And sometimes I'll have it on and I think it's too strong the way I went and I can just pull this down as well until I get it right. 
and he's got the color in his face, but he doesn't look, um, you know, he doesn't look too saturated for what I'm doing. So I'm happy with that. I think that looks good. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put a layer mask back on here. So here's the white box with the black circle. I'm going to zoom in close. And I'm going to soften the edges um, of his hands and boot so that it looks a little bit more like snow. So ah, I'm here. I'm going to put it on a black brush. My brush is soft, 100% opacity, flow 100%. And I'm going to make it pretty small. And I'm going to softly. And as I do this, I like to do bumps. Because snow is not going to give you um, a perfectly smooth finish. And what I don't want is something like this. Yeah where he looks really faded in the snow. It's not too natural. So I keep this small so that I get that control. And I do just go around. so that it looks like his hands are sinking in a little bit. And it's just only the contact points, the points that are actually touching. The rest of it, um, you know, that hand is actually sticking up a little, so I'm not gonna bother with that, with that one right there. And I'm gonna zoom out now, maybe. And that's good, I'm happy with that. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. The next thing I'm going to do is I want a little tiny bit of a shadow underneath him. Um, and that's called the contact shadow. And it doesn't have to be strong, especially because there are shadows that he's already in. I just like a tiny one. So I'm going to select the background layer and I'm going to hit Command J or Control J on a PC. And I'm going to go to my dodge and burn and I'm going to go to my burn tool right here. And I'm going to start with highlights. 8% is lots. And I'm going to make the brush pretty small. So I'll go a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to start waving it back and forth. I'm not going to click as I do this. I'm just going to wave. And this is only affecting the snow underneath him. It's not affecting him at all because I've selected this background copy. And if I mess up, I can always get rid of this copy right here. So I never do it on the original. I always do this on a copy. There are lots of ways to dodge and burn. Um, and I usually use different ways than this, but this is the only one I find effective for snow. And again, I'm just waving it. I'm not clicking the button as I do it, just waving back and forth. And this is gonna be a little bit harsh, but don't worry, I've got so many secrets to fix this. So then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna to go to my midtones. And now I'm just gonna start going where I've already been. And it's gonna take that light I burned and make it a little bit darker. And you can see in some areas, like around the glove, it's working really well. In other areas, I do have to go over a couple times. Okay, and then finally I'll go to shadows. And at these points, I'm doing just the parts really closest to the leg. really just the parts underneath, the ones that are the darkest. 
and I'll still be adjusting from here. Shadows are really that thing that can start making your um, work look um, realistic. It grounds it. It keeps it from looking like it's floating above. I'm just going to do a loose bit around this little guy too. This little paw. Okay, so if I go backward here, that is too dark for sure, and I do have options. So there it is without, there it is on. One option I have is just taking it and bringing the opacity down. So it just looks like a little shadow instead of a big shadow. And I'm pretty happy with that. The other option I have is to take this, put a layer mask on it, use my black brush to erase, and just get a little bit closer so that that shadow is really small and it's truly just beside um, the hands and feet. And that's the one that I like right there. It's not bright anymore, but it, and it's not dark. It doesn't look like it doesn't belong there. It just gives the amount of grounding I'm looking for between these two. That is, so that makes me pretty happy. Um, I feel like this coat could be a little bit too blue. I'm going to try something with that. So I'm going to select the boy layer here and I'm going to go to curves and it is already locked down. And I'm gonna just see about bringing that coat up a bit. Now, when I did that, he got really light and that's okay. I can play with this still. So the number one thing I can do is I can take my black brush and I'm just gonna put it on 20%, 29% opacity. And I'm going to go over this. This takes off some of the curve that I add so that his face isn't so bright anymore. But there, now his jacket's a little bit brighter. It has some tone in it. Before, we couldn't see much of what was happening. Now there's a little bit more tone in there. And I like that. If I'm sure I'm happy with this, at like positive, I'll do two things. I'll go to File, Save As, and I will save this as a PNG, or a PSD, sorry. And I would call it like Polar Boy PSD. And I would save that. And you can see that I've got so many versions of things saved. It's really important because if my client wanted something changed, at this point, I can go and do that because I've left all my layers alone. Um, I'm usually confident enough that I things will be just fine and I can flatten, but if I'm doing client work and not for myself, then this has to be adjustable just in case. So I save it as a PSD and then I go to layer flatten. And from here, um, I mean, these are the basics and this is a great composite. I love it. It looks natural. Um, you might want to go a couple of steps further. Um, and if you want to do that, I do have some products that you could try out. So number one, um, I've created actions. These are the actions that I use for all of my stuff. So say, for example, this is the Joya collection. Um, say, for example, you wanted to um, improve his skin tones a little bit. Um, you could run those by just clicking one button and he is pinky peach. And I've got examples of how all of, it, how all of those colors look. So I could go on here with a white brush at 45%. And I could even out his skin color, especially around here 
where it gets a little funny. So right there, I could um, give him a bit of a warm glow. I should note, these ones don't come with um, Photoshop. You might have actions that you love to use already, and if you do, like, rock it. Um, these are just ones I came up with my own style and way of doing things over time. And I just really wanted something that reflected um, creaminess and dreaminess. Um, and so I made my own. And um, I started producing them for other people. So if you wanted some blush on there, if you wanted to actually um, add some browns in in order to give some deeper color and just go over highlights, middle tones, and darks. His hair is not that blonde. That's a bit better. And when you make the darks darker, the lights lighter, and the mediums evened out, you will get something that looks more 3D and more painterly. And so I'll flatten that. Um, there are tools for eyes in here if you want um, to make teeth whiter. There is a dodge and burn and I'm going to use that. This is the one I like for an all over dodge and burn. So I am going to run that one. And with this dodge and burn, I'm going to select paint black. And it says 5% um, flow, 100% opacity. So flow, 5%. Opacity 100%. It's a what, or sorry, it needs to be a black brush. And this will allow me to go in and I just rub it up and down. And this is going to make the darks darker. It's going to burn them. And again, when you've got that difference between the tones, that's when your stuff pops. And that's really what takes an amateur photo, a flat photo, or maybe the light wasn't working for you right. Um, you know, I took this on a cloudy day on purpose, but I want some drama going on here. I could even add a little bit, since this um, guy here is in some dark clothing, I could add a little bit more drama to the darks of the polar bear here. Always add it to his face if I want. Okay. Just burn a little bit of this side right here. And then I could go in with my white brush, so paint white 5%, 100 opacity flow, making sure that brush is um, soft. And I could just go in here and just for the lightest parts, I will start dodging them. And as I said, there are so many things out there that you can do this with, or you can learn how to dodge yourself um, by using curves. There's just a million ways. But this is the way that I prefer because I like doing things quick and easy. So I spent the time building them up so that um, I wouldn't have to worry anymore. And so there we go. That is a much more dimensional picture than the first one. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to flatten it. And the final one you might like is, um, I used kind of vintagey yellow tones that I painted through here. And to get that effect from the Joya collection, um, I did that, that was creme brulee. So if you run creme brulee, it's going to turn the whole picture really vintagey looking. That's way too much. I don't want the whole thing to be more like that. So I'm going to double click this white box right here and invert it. And then I can take some of that and with the white brush I can paint it on. I'm only going to paint on about 20% or so. But I can go over this little guy right here and I could go over the panda a little bit more if I, panda, polar bear a little bit more if I wanted. 
and I could give them the vintage tones um, to match with the rest of it. And not a big difference there. Oh, that's because it flows at 5%. Let's bring that up. Ah, I need to bring that out again. Okay, let's try this again. I mean, that made things really kind of vintagey. Not too bad. So it just gives that warmness and it will add the same kind of colors that you find back here. Layer flatten. And then the final thing would be you could do something like go to the bottom here um, and um, sharpen this for print. And it might have got, yeah, that's too sharp for me, especially for his jacket. So I could just take a black brush and I could leave the sharps for his face, but I could brush it off the jacket and brush a little bit off the polar bear. So it's just sharpening some areas and not the whole thing. And that is it. There is your tutorial for blending um, these two together and making a really sweet portrait that will definitely impress your clients and your families. Um, if you have any questions, you can always contact me on Etsy. I also have a new website that I am just finishing up, um, samsdreamthemes.com. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys uh, create. So please uh, feel free to send me a picture of what you did um, because it's just really satisfying to see what you guys are able to come up with this stuff. Thank you and uh, keep a lookout for other composites. One last thing I was thinking about was you can um, also add some snow to this if you want. Uh, I leave snow off of most of my composites because people don't always want the snow. But if you'd like that as an option, I can show you what you can do. Um, I do sell, I think about 12 or 15 different types, but I'm going to go to File, Place Linked, and here are my snow overlays. Yeah, so I've got 12 different ones. And these are what they look like. Um, so the one that I really like the most is um, Cuddle Up. It's just these little snowflakes. Some of them are moving, some of them are not. Um, so that's the one I'm going to use for right here. So File, Place Linked, Cuddle Up. And it's going to go over top. And I'm just going to drag it. And I'm going to pull it over the whole thing and hit enter. And you can see it's black, which is not helpful. So I'm going to change the blending mode from normal to screen. And voila, you've got some beautiful little flakes right there. I'm going to put a layer mask on it. I'm going to use a black brush at 100%, 100% flow. It's a nice soft brush. And I am just going to take any snow that went right on his face and just the polar bear's eyes and nose right there. Everything else looks great. So we've got a before and an after. And you can adjust things. Maybe you just don't want quite that much snow. You can just do um, a little bit of cleaning up until the snow um, works for you. And then you can layer and flatten that. And your snow has been applied. Mm -hmm.